example of the Bernoulli equation, a different style than the textbook. So the way this style is going to work is we're going to set it up as y prime equals some function of x times y plus some function of x times y raised to some power. And then we're going to use this substitution to let v equal um, y raised to the 1 minus n, uh, where this is n over here. So we have this equation. This is number 27 in the book, I think. And to get it to look like y prime by itself, we're going to solve this equation for y prime. So the first step is going to be uh, dividing everything by 3xy squared. So it's every single term by 3xy squared. And hopefully that will get us into the Bernoulli format. So after we do that, the 3xy squares cancel here and you're left with just y prime on the left, which is what we want. And this is going to equal, the 3's are going to cancel, x to the 4th over x is x to the 3rd, and then y to the 2nd, I'm going to write it as y to the negative 2nd. Plus, and here the y cubed divided by y squared is going to leave you with a y, and I'm going to write it as a separate entity. So this is going to be 1 over 3x times y so that it looks like um, this up here. Now, p of x and q of x in this are backwards. Um, this is actually the p of x, 1 over 3x, because it's next to the y that is to a single power. And this is q of x because it's next to y that has a uh, power other than 1. All right, and Bernoulli's method is divide everything by the highest or different power of y. So in this case, we don't want to touch the single factor of y, we want to touch this y squared. So I'm going to divide the entire equation by y to the negative 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by y squared. So I'm going to multiply this side by y squared, and I'm going to multiply this side by y squared. So that'll get me into the Bernoulli format. y squared, y prime, is equal to x cubed uh, plus well, so this is going to be 1 over 3x times y cubed. Okay. Now this is where we're going to use the substitution. The substitution of v equals y raised to the 1 minus n. n in this case is negative 2. This is what n is. It's that other power of y. So if we do that, we're going to get v equals y raised to the 1 minus a negative 2, better known as y cubed. And with that substitution, you'll notice that right here is a y cubed, so this immediately is going to get changed into v. The problem is that we also need v prime. So we have v is equal to y cubed. If we take the derivative of both sides, we have to do it implicitly, because y is a function of x. We're going to get the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, which will become y prime, or dy dx if you want to think of it that way. All right, well, we have a y prime, that's over here, and next to it is y squared, which is good because that's what v prime has in it. The only thing that's missing is this 3. So one way to deal with it is to take this equation and divide both sides by 3. So I can do a substitution where v prime over 3 replaces y squared times y prime. So this y squared y prime, we're going to change it into v prime over 3, and this y cubed over here, we're going to change it into just plain old v. All right, so we're going to need a new page uh, here. Do a little substitution, and this is going to be v prime over 3 replaces y squared y prime is equal to x cubed, 1 over 3x stays, and y cubed is turning into v. Now, once we do the substitution, it should turn into a, um, a linear, what is it called, a integrating factor type problem, first order linear. So what I'm going to do is move the v term over to the other v term, and I'm going to multiply by 3 at the same time. So if I multiply by 3, we're going to get v prime. It's going to become minus 1 over x, the 3 will cancel when I multiply it through, v is equal to... Um, 3x cubed. There we go. 
All right, now we need our integrating factor. So to get the integrating factor, we're going to go off to the side and do e uh, integral of px. px, in this case, little p, is going to be negative 1 over x, uh, that piece right here. So we're going to get negative 1 over x dx. Okay, uh, pull the negative out. The antiderivative 1 over x is ln of x. So you're going to get e to the negative ln of x which is the same thing as e to the ln of x to the negative 1. And inverse functions will eh, cancel, if you want to say it that way. And we're left with x to the negative 1, which is better known as 1 over x. So we're going to multiply this equation, the whole thing, by 1 over x. And after we do that, we can set it up as the derivative of a product. And that product happens to be your integrating factor times your other function, in this case, v. Um, first times the derivative of the second, that'll give you uh, 1 over x, that'll give you the v prime, 1 over x v prime. And then second times the derivative of the first will give you the uh, negative 1 over x squared. So that was just the product rule, and that's the whole point of the integrating factor, is equal to, and then over here we're just going to get 3x squared. And then we can integrate both sides. And what that allows us to do is to get rid of the DDX, um, first fundamental theorem of calculus, all that fun stuff. And we get 1 over x times v is equal to uh, antiderivative of this side. So we're going to raise that to 3, divide by 3, and we're going to just get plain old x uh, cubed plus some constant of integration. Okay. Now, um, next step, I would multiply both sides by x. So if we bring it up over here, we're going to get v equals uh, x to the fourth. Don't forget to multiply the constant by x. And then we're going to do our substitution back, because I'm not trying to solve for v. I was really trying to solve for y. So the substitution was v equals y cubed. So this becomes y cubed equals this. And then finally, cube root both sides. And there's our solution with a constant involved. We would need an initial condition to get rid of it. So that is using Bernoulli's method.